Hi, my name is DK Garrison, and welcome to Survive 365 Your 360. Today we're here with a renowned illustrator and co-creator of Big City Comics and Brother Man, Mr. Dawoo Anyuwile. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? I hope I got that pronunciation yeah, correct. Okay, outstanding. Dawoo, we're here at this at your gallery. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, well, what's going on now is the uh, it's called Drawn from the Soul, the official Brother Man comics art experience. And what it is it's the celebration of the, the resurgence of Brother Man, which was birthed in 1990. We introduced it at the Black Expo New York, uh, Pier 88 in 1990, and it did a, a run, a five-year run of 11 issues and 750,000 books. And there was a dormancy period of pretty much 12, 13 years, but the fan base has been pulling it, and now we're bringing it back. We, want, we didn't want to just bring it back um, just through the bookstores. We wanted to have an event. So we came up with the idea of doing an art show and putting original work from the comic books in the show. And we, we felt like there was nothing out there like that, Absolutely. especially for a black comic book. Absolutely. So uh, Brother Man was kind of unique in that. But we always want to do something unique. Okay. You know? Well, you said 1990, and that's a long time now to be in any game. Tell us a little bit about your journey from 1990 to 2010, where we are now? Well, what happened was uh, that with Big City Comics, that was initially the my family, my brother, Jason, my brother Guy, he does the writing. Uh, my parents were also involved with the business. You know, at that time I was 24 years old. Uh, and Brother Man, when it first came out, you know, it came out during a time where, you know, this pre boom out. There was no Blank Man, no Media Man. Nobody was really talking about black superheroes except for the, the, the few that Marvel and DC had. We had uh, Black Panther, Luke Cage, Black Lightning. That's all we had, basically. Yeah. And then before that is, uh, you, you gotta reach back to Fat Out. Right. You know, but even within the, the Marvel and DC strain, there was like a lot of stereotypical behavior in it. Or it's not owned and operated by us. With this, we owned it, operated it, distributed it, marketed it. It was about us. And it was actually, the book is kind of rooted in family. Because I didn't want to create something that, you know, it separated everybody. You, you know, everybody can come together and read it. And it had that effect. So everything that we wanted to put into the book actually manifested to reality. So within that 1990 period, what we did was we bypassed the comic book industry. Because I knew a couple guys who were publishing books independently for us, but I saw the issues that they had because they were trying to fit into the mold of the machine that was already set up. So they already know what your steps are. So with us, we bypassed that whole industry by going directly to the to our people, going to the black uh, black expos. We had individuals on the street who got them in stores. Like we would sell more books to a barber shop <laughs> than wow. to a comic book shop. Wow. You see what I mean? Like like what would be equivalent of Superman sales in a comic book shop was going to a barber shop or to a black bookstore, Shrine of Black Madonna or Pyramid Books in Baltimore in DC. You know what I mean? So you were taking it directly to our kids. Right. And my brother and I were drive we were driving all over the country. So it's not like we were just waiting for an order to come in. We had orders shipping while we were sleeping, but we also would get in the car. We drive to, uh, we started in Jersey, we moved to Dallas, and the purpose of being in Dallas was to be centrally located in the country. So we drive to Chicago, drive to, once, the longest trip was, we went to LA Expo, Oakland, up to Indianapolis, did book signings in Cincinnati, timed everything, and came back to Dallas. And I think that was like a week worth of driving. Yeah, and it, and it was taxing. I mean, all this stuff was taxing. I mean, a lot of the, the books, original pages you see, were drawn in the bank. You're kidding. Uh, yeah, it, it's not like how I work now. I work in, uh, my brother would be driving. We go, we would drive through Tennessee Mountain, through the desert, and I'm in the back drawing the next issue. You know, and we did a lot of our plotting and planning driving across the country. So but we're no time. We, we had no time to waste. You know, we, we understood what we were doing and we knew what we were up against. That's the only way you're going to sell 700,000 copies. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it doesn't get done just by sitting in the house. Right. And so I, that's commendable. Mm -hmm. Now I want to talk a little bit about the main character, uh, Antonio Ballard. Right. Is there a little bit of you in him? Um, I I think there's a lot of myself in all of my work. I mean, even outside of Brother Man, I, I have like a lot of other stories. And this dates back to high school. Um, you know, a lot of people say, hey, you look like your characters, but my friends, they look like their characters. You know, because of, uh, you, you see yourself more than anybody else when you look in the mirror. Really. But, um, but it's funny because when I first created Brother Man, I wouldn't think that it was my attribute because it began as a parody of superheroes. Superheroes always like upstanding, they can't be bent. You know, you look at Clark Kent, you look at you know, Superman, Spider-Man, you know, they're always like that icon of of uh, heroism. I kind of never thought, I didn't think, of, you know, to be honest, when I was coming, I thought of myself as just, you know, I got a pencil and I draw. I wasn't thinking of it as power. So I created Brother Man. I just wanted to create that, that iconic character who couldn't be bent. I didn't understand really how the character ate. I just knew he didn't eat what I was eating. During that time, you know, I was meat, he was meat. I was, uh, you know, I was going to all the junk food places. You know, I'm from Philly. I'm right. in the cheese days, homies, all that stuff. But I knew Brother Man wouldn't eat that, the carrot. But what happened was I went through a transitional state after the 11th book. And in that, 11th, in, in that, tr that transitional state, I stopped eating meat. Um, I started moving into a different level of consciousness. And then I started saying, I get it. Now I understand who this character is. Because he never had superpowers. That was the drop. That was the whole theme of the book. Is that he didn't have superpowers. He tapped into his spiritual self. He eradicated his fears so he can still die. So it's almost like you and the character grew together. I feel as though I came to understand the character. I never really claimed it's me. But I feel that...